which I didn't really touch on too much, but you know, we've got our really skilled workers heading south right now. Um, but in any case, having that workforce that's available up there, the tax structure, um, I kind of covered it already. Why are the oil companies investing? Well, first of all, we, we saw the slides, we saw the data. We do have investment, both capital and operating expenditures at all-time highs. We do have investment on the North Slope. And, and I don't disagree. We don't have the production that we want. We do have investment. How do we get uh, more investment? How do we get more production? That's the question. And uh, that's, I think, something that we talked quite a bit about. Uh, this one's for Kathy. What records have you uh, seen upon which you base your opinion? And um, they were looking for some references. Is your presentation available? Is it printed at all? Um, it's not, but I could print it. Okay. Uh, you know, I attended the two-day workshop with Dr. Van Meers, who urged us to consider changing our tax structure, that we would have to make some pretty dramatic changes to actually telegraph to the world that, in fact, we were open for business. He was very concerned about our credits. He said they are excessive and that they were detrimental. In fact, when we talk about Great Bear, this is a company that wants to come up and do fracking on the North Slope. Good on them. I hope they're successful. But it was going to be very capital intensive. It's going to cost them a lot of money. They're going to be applying for credits. And as Dr. Van Meers pointed out, he's very concerned that Alaska will be in a negative government take. Okay? All those taxes, that's government take. We're going to be giving back so much in credits that we will actually be um, losing revenue, so to speak. Uh, we're not giving back money. We're giving credits that, that brings people here to explore. That's why we have so many explore, explorers up on the slope right now. This is for Senator Wilikowski. If your theory that tax rates do not impact production, combined with the reference to the maximum benefits while well, Alaskans is true, um, why did you stop the tax rates where you did? Why not raise them higher to further maximize the benefit? You're trying to strike a fine balance. You uh, Ultimately, no one wants to go to litigation with the, the oil companies. I mean, that's an absolute last resort that you want to do. I think what we did when we passed ACES was we struck a fine balance between uh, what we thought was us getting maximum benefit, what we thought was going to incentivize the oil companies to come in and explore, incentivize new companies into the state of Alaska, incentivize new jobs and, and new development. And if you look, we have all-time highs in investment, we have all-time highs in jobs, we have all-time highs, uh, maybe not all-time highs, close to all-time highs in exploration next year. Then we've got all-time highs in number of companies doing business. Senator uh, isn't it true that all oil, oil wells and oil fields, as they age, have declining rates of production, so they increase oil uh, for throughput into the pipeline, we can put more new fields into production? It is true. The decline curve that you saw is a, is a standard decline curve. It, it, it's Virtually every oil field in the world will, will show a decline like what you saw in Senator Diesel's decline curve and the decline curve I showed you. There's a couple different varying ideas on where, where you're going to get the new oil. If you talk to, to the producers, <coughs> what the producers will tell you is 90% of the new oil is going to come from existing fields. If you talk to a company like Great Bear, what Great Bear testified to before the legislature was within the next decade, they expect to be putting a million new barrels of oil per day into the pipeline from the shale oil reserves. So you will get different answers depending, you know, if you're a shale oil person, you're going to say shale oil is the answer. If you're someone who holds existing conventional leases, you're going to say that's where all the new oil is going to come from. But we first going to come from a variety of sources. Any comments on the Great Bear and a million dollars? A million, million barrels dollars. in that pipeline? Great Bear has not produced a single barrel of oil yet. I hope they're successful. But this scale of fracking has not been done on the slope before. We don't know how plastic these rocks will be. And, and able to frack them appropriately. So it's basically an experiment at this point. I wish them luck, but I'm not counting on it. I know where there is significant deposits. That's in the established fields and in fields that Repsol is looking at, Brooks Range. There are other explorers looking at proven sites of oil. Has Great Bear made any comments about their, the need to change ACEs uh, or not? They have, yes. They have indicated so that a change in ACEs will make a difference in there. When, when they testified before the Senate Resources, they, 
they specifically didn't talk about changing ACEs. Uh, that was not something that they asked for. If you're an oil company on the North Slope uh, and you have an opportunity to ask for lower taxes, of course you're going to ask for lower taxes. Of course you're going to ask for lower well, taxes. Did they say whether or not it would, in your understanding, not, not necessarily in front of me, but at any time, say that it would impact their investment decisions or their production decisions? Well, they're going forward right now. They are, uh, my understanding is they're undertaking uh, some test wells on the North Slope. What, what you have on the North Slope is, imagine that Prudhoe Bay is, is um, like a small lake. We've produced 15 billion barrels or so of oil out of Prudhoe Bay. Well, Prudhoe Bay is actually a lake that's been filled by a giant ocean. The giant ocean is called the Shublik Formation. That's all the, all the easy flowing oil has flowed from the Shublik Formation into Prudhoe Bay. The, the remaining rock is tight rock, and, and Senator Geisel's right. I mean, they, they have to do tests in there to, to see how easily that's going to flow once you start fracking it. That's what they're doing right now with their, with their test wells. Uh, again, if a company comes in and says, give me tax breaks, and, and I will produce... But did they ever give an indication as to whether or not the changes in ACES were necessary for them to do production here that would make a difference? They've never testified... They've never testified that way in front of any committee I sit on. I I wouldn't doubt that they would say that though if you gave if you gave them a microphone. Glenn, by chance, um, being new on the block, I went to every hearing I could on HB 110 in the House, and I know that's unusual. I guess we're not supposed to cross the lines, but I wanted to learn as much as I could. So I went to House Resources and House Finance. In House Finance, the finance officer for Great Bear testified, and he was quite clear, they would need a change in our tax structure, our production tax structure, before they would be able to begin producing. It's going to cost them a tremendous amount of money just to do this experiment in fracking, but they are going to need a change, and they testified that in House Finance. Have the producers ever made a commitment to hiring Alaskans? Do I get to answer that one? You both get to answer that one. All right. I serve on Senate Labor and Commerce. And so we uh, have been hearing this bill, looking at data. You know, the Department of Revenue, bless them, does the best they can. But their data is highly flawed, and they will admit it. And so when their data comes out and says, uh, more jobs than ever, and they're out of staters, you have to ask a lot more questions to really get to the bottom of it. When we look at the in-state resident hire by the petroleum companies, it's anywhere from 82 to 85 percent of their employees. And this is data that, yes, we've gotten from them, but has been verified by um, a study by the McDowell Group. So this has been done. One of the interesting things is in 2006, and the graph isn't up there, we had a, a spill up on the slope and, and lots of remediation work had to be done and we needed a workforce up here. Well, you know, that is pointed to as a time when we had a lot of non-residents come up. By chance, I happened to look on the uh, IBEW's website. Now, IBEW doesn't just employ uh, electrical workers and so forth, but it was a thank you letter in November of that year thanking the out-of-state union members for coming up and working in Alaska. So, what other state, I will ask you, questions where someone is from before they hire them? As far as I know, we're still the United States. We still have the freedom to work where we want to work, right, so far. So I think it's really parochial of Alaska to keep asking people, where do you live? If you don't live here, we're not going to hire you. How many of you moved here from somewhere else? Well, the simple fact is, according to the Department of Labor, since 2006, you have a 160% increase in the number of Alaskans filing for unemployment claims. You have, according to the Alaska Department of Labor, 54% of all new hires are non-residents. That's according to the Department of Labor. Those aren't my facts. So, uh, you know, I think it is important. And let me tell you what else is going on in the North Slope. You have, in a time of record profits, you have the oil companies going to the contractors saying, we want wage cuts. We want 10% wage cuts in the time of record profit. And quite frankly, that's driving Alaskans off the slope. 
because if you can get another job in town where you're not getting a 10% wage cut, then you're likely to take it. So uh, this is a fact that's not getting out. I think it's important. And another thing, which I think we need to see, quite frankly, is when oil companies are going to hire, go ahead and post it in Alaska first. I know people who are trying to get jobs through various contractors who can't even figure out where to apply. They have some, some office in Colorado or somewhere else to apply. So if the oil companies and the contractors are really serious about hiring Alaska, they can do a much better job than they're doing right now. Can you mandate it? It's very difficult to do. Constitutionally, it's very difficult to, to say you must hire Alaskans. Can the companies do a better job? Absolutely. Do you have any evidence maybe that oil companies don't hire Alaskans if they have expertise? Oh, absolutely. You can look at the, you know, there are certain jobs on the North Slope that require a, that there are not enough qualified Alaskans, without a doubt. Petroleum engineers, geologists, there's a finite number of those in the state of Alaska. But if you look at the jobs that are available on the North Slope, you're looking at plumbers, <coughs> carpenters, laborers. These are, and I can tell you, you go to any of the union halls and ask them, do you have any uh, members on the books who, who would like to go up and work on there? Absolutely. Absolutely without a doubt. Uh, Glenn, can I just add oh, something yeah, yeah. to that, Sorry please? About that. Rebecca, I, you, she's here to well, I just want to say something about the, the new hire data. That yeah, fact, that that number drives me 